Hello, everyone. Thank you for checking out this episode of Really Dicey. I'm here with Aurelian Lane, and we're here to talk about his book, The Choreo Hall of Adventures. It's a 5e and also Pathfinder um, uh, adventure source book that has um, some new subclasses full of adventure seeds and, and settings and everything based on Korean mythology. Uh, am I am I correct about that? Exactly. That's perfectly right. Tell me about Korean mythology. What what makes it different from other mythologies out there? It, it's it's hard to say that it's that difference in the sense that it follows the same um, the same path of uh, creators and then um, a group of people starting to 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 colonize the the known world, in this case, Joseon, but uh, in, in Korea, it used to be this, uh, this area that goes all the way to Manchuria. So it, it's, I don't know that it's that different in the structure of it. Then it's just its inhabitants that are different. And some of its core, um, some of its core elements, like uh, something that really I, I really fell in love with was the heavenly beings. The idea that everybody comes from this one um, core population and then everybody comes down from that, right? And that's, that's something that's very relevant uh, mm -hmm. here in Korea because it comes to this concept of Han, which means one. Um, Han, so you'll, you'll spell it H-A-N in Romanized version. And then this Han is very important. It means that everybody's connected. Everybody's uh, supposed to, to, in a way, be kind to each other, support each other, because we all have the same origin, right? So that's very prevalent in the culture here, and that's that. That is the one element that I really pulled out of the uh, of the mythology as I knew it here. Then everything else is um, is is relatively similar to a lot of themes that you've heard before. Like for example, the creators of a of Korea were a tiger and a bear who were uh, inside of a cave, and then created Korea in their image. Uh, that's why you will, if you look at the Korean map, it's sometimes referred as an inverted tiger. So all of all of these things, you can find similar types of myths based on animals all around the world. But the one piece that really attracted me was the heavenly people, the the people of origin that created everybody else. Okay, how how was it was it tricky try to uh, take um, uh, Korean mythology into a, a D and D settings and rules and everything with with their you know with their species and and the classes that they have um, the trick was that it might it, it's going to sound very disappointing but my my uh, strength is definitely not mechanics so i've always approached this setting uh, on the story part because that's my original training so it was always all about the story and from there i created enough blocks of information then I could work with, uh, with writers for the mechanics who were very talented to do the excellent job at transcribing the key ideas into mechanics and creating these, um, these classes and, and everything. And if you check the book, it's actually very light on classes and races and everything. It's mostly descriptive. And then there are some places where I go in depth, like the, like the shaman class, for instance, but the the most important part of this book was to set up the world world and now i'm 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 working to develop all the different aspects that will strengthen it as a as a gaming component you mentioned before that you never write too much about the species and races in in this book mm -hmm. but um um but i there you do mention about um well obviously for example elves don't exist in in mostly Asian mythology, unless I'm wrong about that. Usually I believe it's, it's created or it, it was created somewhere in European mythology. Mm -hmm. um, uh, yeah, it's very Tolkien. Yeah. yeah. Um, how, um, can you talk about like some of the things you've done? Like I, I like what you did with some, with the dragonborns, with the gnomes and dwarves and halflings. Would you mind explaining that to us? I, I am personally, I love playing dragonborns. So rather than really pulling all of this out of the mythology itself, that was a personal choice. I wanted them to you to play a, a huge role in, uh, in this setting because this is the, the race that I like the most playing myself, right? So then what I needed was diversity because I wanted it to, to really integrate with all parts of that setting. And then 
from there, I took each phrase that are originally in the player's handbook and tried to find some background setting because the idea was that I didn't want this book to feel uh, to be a an outlier in the sense that it it really takes uh, a localization uh, principle to it. That's not what I wanted. I wanted to be a bridge between the the mythology and the culture that I was working with and the the, the international. Uh, market in a sense so i wanted each race that was playable in the player handbook to have some sort of history with this uh, gameplay setting so that anyone who wanted to play them could still continue to play them while entering a different world basically okay and um talk speaking of classes uh what can players expect to be in this world what options are available the specific options so there's three there's one class and two subclasses. The main class is the is the shaman class, which is called Mudan in Korean, um, and they're basically a connection between the material world and the spiritual world. And then you have two subclasses. One is uh, Jane, which is a Korean god, and Sunim, which is the Korean monk. Um, it's the the bard especially was tricky because there's no such thing as a bard. In Korea, it is they're more called like entertainers because they have a wide range of different abilities. The chain basically means performer, a performer that will do music, acrobatics, um, uh, costume dances, etc., etc. Right. So it was not the part as we really know it in the West. So this one was a little bit tricky. Now, Sunim was very straightforward because monks have, have a long history in D and D. So those are the one class and the two subclasses. Then you have a few backgrounds, which are a lot more for flavor than real hard, uh, hardcore mechanics. And, um, and then there are a few different races, but for now they're only descriptive. And then as time passes, I will release more and more content that will allow those races to be played, especially there's two that I really, really want to get out there. One is the Tokebi which is for now just a monster. And one is the Suoshin, which is um, which is a character with very specific spiritual, spiritual abilities. I think of it as, um, what is it? The, ah, this spell is gone. Uh, basically creating a pocket of reality that is completely disconnected from the material world and things like that. So those are two races that I really want to get out there uh, sometime soon. Okay. So let's talk about the world of uh, uh, Um, uh There's a lot of material you put in this book about about this world. Um, what what can you tell us? What can players and, and game masters expect? Like what what's the world like exactly? Like what's going on politically? So yeah. The, that was the, the key part uh, for me was how to make this world interconnected enough that what happens on one side can influence the other, but at the same time open enough that for, for players who want to, they don't have to run into political related issues all the time. So basically, the, this world has been uh, built on a few principles. One was uh, so interconnection, like I said, I wanted every everything to kind of have an impact on each other. The one was exploration. So enough enough areas with question marks that it felt like exp um, a game based on exploration alone was possible. But also enough details that that exploration did not require a complete um, a complete imagination from the players and from the DM and creating on that, all the content is there. So for instance, um, in Korea and in, in a lot of countries, but when, when you live here, you really can feel it. Food is very, very important. So there are actually a lot of places in the world where um, there's food specialties. So if you wanted, for example, to create a one shot or even a, a full campaign and going around the world and discovering making a list of the specialties that are in the world. You, you could still do that, run into a lot of very interesting NPCs, discover a bunch of different areas that, are, that have their own uh, identities, 
And this could be a type of adventure that is possible with the content in the book. Now, you have all the regular um, non-exploratory uh, adventures as well. So for instance, if you're a beginning adventurer and you wanted, if your DM wanted to go and, um, and have a long adventure that starts at the very beginning and is completely centered around the idea of taking jobs at the whole of adventures, it's possible as well. There are areas in this world that that have very straightforward jobs for ad beginning adventurers. So for instance, in the south, you have those open wounds that are basically holes in the ground from which creatures constantly come out. And that area hires uh, mercenaries to help defending on a regular basis. There are festivals that are always looking for, um, for protection uh, against uh, thieves, etc. But at the same time, you also have uh, assassination plots and everything. So all of this is possible. And then towering over all that, you have what we were talking about, which is the politics. So you have the realms, you have three main realms with governing, governing bodies. You have smaller city-states that very clearly wants to separate and do their own thing. Um, the richness that I wanted to bring was I want everyone to get enough content to do all types of adventures so that the world looks like a breathing place, a living place that everybody can use and, and feel like they're doing something real. Let's talk about the magic in this world. I know you've, yep. you've written some, some, um, uh, some things about, about it specifically for this book. Uh, well, how is magic, would you say, different in, in this, in this uh, campaign setting compared to others? So the structure, um, in, in, in the main D&D uh, books, it's the weave, right? The, the, that's what creates the magic in the world. In this, in this setting, uh, what creates magic is slightly different. At the beginning of the world, there was only spiritual energy. That's all. There was no world. There was no material. There was nothing. And then creation through um, the old gods of the time uh, trickled into creating the world that has become Joseon now. And spiritual energy is what wizards and, and, uh, and spirits use to, <clears throat> to create spells. So it's the channeling of uh, spiritual energy that actually uh, you, uh, is being used to make spells. And in order to make sure that spiritual energy is always uh, flowing through the world, there is all these festivals, all these rituals that create a connection with the spirits. So the spirits come in and out of the material world and this, uh, going back and forth between spiritual world. And that creates a spark of spiritual energy. And it's those sparks that actually uh, offers the chance to, 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 to cast spells. So that's the basic idea. What that does is places where people are very devout and do a lot, of, um, a lot of rituals, a lot of festivals are full of spiritual energy and spells can be uh, very uh, powerful and very easy to cast. However, in places that are more empty, where there's less people, where uh, there's uh, uh, less rituals or in areas that are more urban and therefore less and less spiritual, those, um, those spells maybe can misfire or can be less effective. So this entire intricacies of spells and the quantity of energy I didn't develop uh, in, the, in the book simply because I wanted everybody to be introduced into the world in, in, in a way that is familiar. But that will be part of the, the content that I will develop later is what can happen with your, with your spell if you're in areas that don't have a lot of uh, spiritual activity. And there are places where, where um, there is no spiritual energy, maybe because the place is cursed, maybe because... Um, some dark forces are trying to keep uh, spirits out because they have something to hide, maybe. In those places, wizards become completely useless. Okay. So it, it's kind of reminiscent of, uh, of OSR in a bit, in, in a way, where magic is not as stable. And I think it's a fantastic idea to offer a bit of randomness to, to the entire game. Sometimes it's, it's just a lot of fun. Okay. What would you say is your favorite monster that, that's in this book? Well, I have two. Uh, one is the Tokebi, of course, because it offers a lot of flexibility. 
Tokibis is a society. There is an entire world underground where they live, with, where they've created a, 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 this huge society full of different kinds of Tokibis that will have different effects depending on the, who faces them. But also they were the instigators of some of the hardest times in all of Joseon. So they have a place in history, they have a place in the present, and they're not completely mindless. You have the, the, you have the, the, the lower rank ones that will just do whatever, but then the higher the ranks you go and, and the more you have to be worried of what they can do. So those, this in terms of evil are, are the ones that I really like that are very, a lot of history connected to Joseon. And then you have the dragon, the young, I, I love him because what's beautiful about those creatures uh, in general, in, in Korean um, mythology and in Korean beliefs, it's a lot about development. It's not one creature is a dragon, one creature is this, one creature is that. It's in this case, the dragon comes from, at the beginning, it's a serpent, a, lo a giant serpent. And then after a thousand years of existence, it goes through a sp spiritual uh, test and at the end of this it becomes an imugi which is the intermediary stage a, a soon to become dragon creature and then a thousand years later another spiritual test is passed and then becomes a dragon which is a very wise and charismatic uh, creature so everybody understands that if you are going to kill a dragon in Joseon you actually it's not something that you want to do out of sport because you're actually at attacking a 3,000 years worth of evolution. And most people would agree in Joseon that it's not right. Hmm. So if you're gonna do this, you're gonna attract on yourself a couple of bounties probably to make sure that you don't do it again. Okay, okay. For, for game masters that wanna play in this world, but they may need uh, some sort of example, some, either like a, a movie or a book or another media to, to look at first, to mm -hmm. get an, a, 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 a taste of, of the world. Uh, what would you recommend uh, that they would check out? So actually, on, on the, that's something that I was considering putting in the book, but then page count became a big issue. Because <laughs> uh, as you know, as a backer, it was supposed to be about 150 pages. That was the original, um, original plan. So the entire, the entire manuscript was written so that once he ships, it's 100, 150, 160 pages, send it out and then create more content. It's just it never felt enough. As I was compiling everything to finalize and, send, and, uh, and go through more and more rounds of edit, it never felt enough. And what the backers are receiving now is actually 272 pages. So I had to be very, very careful on, uh, on page count. And for this reason, what, what, what I want to mention now didn't make it into the book. So it is going out onto the website so all of adventures.com and it's called appendix k and uh, i think everybody is familiar with uh, what that means <laughs> but it's uh, um, every week as much as possible but regularly for sure i put articles out there written by a, a very um, very good writer called Cord seller is helping a lot for all of these articles and they have uh, examples of movies, they have examples of books, they have examples of TV shows, all of that to get some inspiration. Um, I think to, to get started, one place that is, uh, that is quite good is, ah, it's gone. The zombie TV show that came out a couple of years ago on Netflix. Uh, the, the Kingdom? Ah, Kingdom, there you go. Kingdom is a good place to start visually. I think uh, whatever you'll see in Kingdom is pretty much what you would expect to see in Joseon. Uh, other than that, just, just visit the site and there's constantly new and new addition in the app uh, Appendix K um, uh, section of the site. Okay, excellent. So is there anything, before we wrap up, is there anything about this book that uh, I haven't asked you about that you want to share with our, with our viewers? To me, the, po the most important part of this book is it has to feel alive. 
it has to feel when you open it, all of a sudden there's all these people that jump on you and you want to be part of it. I'm so sorry, it's so nice. <laughs> you need to understand, I live in Seoul. There's not a single place in, the, in this city that is not noisy. <laughs> no, it's okay, it's okay. Uh, so yeah, it, 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 I want it to, to feel completely alive so that once you jump in it, everything you read and all the adventures you go through, you know that something bigger is coming because it is my plan to make a lot of much bigger things, including this big camping setting that would span the entire continent. So this is the most important for me, is that you feel that you can be part of something bigger and something bigger is coming. Why did you decide to make the book? There, there's, there's a few reasons, but one of them was, I've been playing d and in, in Korea for, for a few years by that time that I decided to do it, and I realized that everything I played with, made bit with uh, Korean tables and non-Korean tables, it was always uh, Tolkien visions of what medieval setting should look like. And I thought that that, that, that wasn't right. There should be something else. Uh, originally, I was hoping to print Harry and Korean as well. I did a, uh, a crowdfunding, I think it was three, two, two or three months ago to try and make it happen. But D&D has lost a bit of a, has got a little bit of bad rep uh, as of about a year ago. So it just didn't happen here. Uh, but that was the idea. The idea was to have it in a Korean setting so that we can play here in Korea with a Korean setting. And the book is doing really well here. Um, some, when the, the stores here are sending it, are selling it quite well. So I think this is still possible. And that was one of the ideas. The other one is there is no, setting like this outside that is based on Korea in a way that is, I'm hoping, as, um, as faithful as I tried to make it. Uh, I think in that sense, it's quite unique. A lot of uh, settings are based on, uh, on Japan mythology, on uh, Chinese mythology, mainland China mythology, but nothing on Korea. And since I had this ability based on how long I've been here, how much I've studied here. Um, I thought it, I, I could get it done in a way that would be interesting for a lot of people. Okay. So anyone that wants to know more about this book or even go ahead and try to purchase it while, while there's still copies, um, uh, where can they go? Holloveadventures.com. So H-A-L-L of adventures.com. And uh, everything, all the info is there. So either... Uh, order it here. I'm, I'm, I am running out of uh, copies soon, but I'm going to try to set up a, a, a system of um, print on demand uh, in different continents. So one in Europe, one in the US, one in Asia, so that later on it's still possible. But I don't know how much it's going to impact the price yet. So at the price that it is now, holloveadventures.com is the best place to get it. Okay, excellent. Well, thank you so much for your time um, to talk about this book. And um, I would like, like to let our viewers know that uh, this book is fantastic. So it's a, it's a fantastic work of art, in my opinion. Uh, very, it's always great to read a, a bo any book, actually, where you, you read it and you take it with you as well. You know, and I, um, so that your, helps your, your, helps your your growth in understanding of other cultures and other people. And I have to say for the most part, when it comes, especially with, with uh, Asian culture, D&D um, &D and some other, other uh, books out there in the past, especially, uh, we're terrible at it. You know, I, I, I read Karatura and there's nothing about it that I took with me because when you actually look into mythology, you realize that a lot of that just doesn't fit in. It's just, it was just mishmash patchwork nonsense. Um, so I'm really glad this book exists and I'm really glad to have it in my collection. And again, thank you very much. Thank you. My, my viewers, go and get this book right away. Um, and and um, have a good day, everyone. Be safe.